Hey guys, Nero here from Drinkling Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir. So I'm just gonna let you guys know right now that, uh, well, we kind of reached the end of Oscar's route. I found that out. I played for a few more minutes, and uh, it just ended. So uh, I, I gotta wait till the next update. But that does leave me a little bit of opportunity to play one of the other guys' routes. So, I'm going to be doing Lay this time. So we're gonna load up that spot right there, and we're gonna pick Lay and see where things go. Anyway, guys, sit back and let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right into it, shall we? All right, Alarm Chin, you're up. All right, and this shall be Lay's route. All right, catch up to the possum. All right, so this is after bumping into all three of the guys. Thanking whoever he is is probably the most courteous thing to do, especially after he saved me. Not, especially after he saved me, not just but my, especially after he saved not just me but my wallet too. A new laptop would have cost me an arm and a leg if things went really bad. Racing out the door, I run, in, I run past, right past the otter. It was like he's about to stop me, but changes his mind. Instead, he just gives me a little wave and smile, and the, the smile never leaving his face. Turning the corner, I barely catch the edge of a leather jacket exiting the side of the, the side of the door of the building. I'm about to let out a loud groan before remembering how many people are around me. Now wanting to draw attention, I swallow it back down. Picking up my pace again, I'm back to chasing the marsupial down the hallway. Oh! Into an alleyway, okay? Wait. Okay. Let's see. After a couple seconds of running, I'm bursting through the door and almost running into some railing. Reaching out for the door handle, I'm barely able to latch onto it before I lose all balance. I look down at the unfamiliar stairs around me, confused for only a moment before I figure out exactly where this is. It's a fire exit scaling the side of the building. It leads down to the road that connects the lower part of the campus. I can't help but worry that I might have tripped some alarms. Some fire escapes have alarms that trigger when they're open, right? Looking around, I notice something else, too. Right, be right below me is the guy I've been chasing, looking up towards me from the bottom of the stairs. Confusion and concern are covering his face, his eyebrows furrowing in a way that makes him look too old to be fresh out of high school. You okay, kid? I'm not. Yeah, I'm fine. Sorry. I must have given you a fright. You're fine. I've heard much worse shit coming from doors than one being slammed open. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to respond to that. What does that even mean? I close the door and hop my way down the stairs, feeling awkward as he waits for me in silence. When I reach the bottom, the intimidating possum is standing straight, his arms crossed. Honestly, I expected him to have a slouch with his hands in his pockets. I guess that would be rather cliché. This isn't some teen movie. Looking into his emerald eyes, there's a look of expectation in them that contrasts his blank expression. So? Um, well, I just wanted to say thanks. You really saved my butt there. Oh, it was nothing. <laughs> I feel immensely awkward now. I didn't really plan what to do after I thanked him. I'm not used to talking to people. After a couple more seconds of silence, he turns away and starts walking down the path. I'm considering letting him go, but I didn't just I didn't just rush all the way out here to just say thanks and leave. My name is Wallace! I blurt the words out, not really thinking. I just needed to say something to stop him from leaving. My paws are becoming slick with sweat, my heart is racing. I'm having trouble keeping my breathing steady, too. Is this a panic attack? I haven't had one in years. I don't remember them well. His big ears twitch and he looks back over his shoulder, slowing down to a stop. W Wallace Stewart, it's it's uh, good to meet you. He continues staring at me, even though I know he isn't that bad. I feel nervous under his gaze. I'm so nervous that my hands begin fidgeting with the buttons on my shirt. Lay. What? That's my name. Oh, that's a unique name. I haven't heard it before. Yeah, it certainly is. Again, his wording causes me to stall, unable to figure out how to respond. The silence returns, and it's not long before Lay begins to walk away again. This time, I'm not sure what I can say to continue the conversation. I'm just holding him up at this point. It's best if I just let him go. As if to spite my expectations, he stops after a few steps to look back to look back at me again. You coming? The dumbfounded expression on my face must be amusing, because for a second, I can see the corner of his mouth, of his mouth twitch into a smile. There's a swelling of glee inside me, and the smile growing on my face feels larger than any I've had in a long time. God, I must look so stupid. Yeah, sure! Catching up to him, he returns back to his regular pace. He's been walking slower to give me chances to talk. 
Eh, the thought of that causes the insides of my ears to burn. I can't explain why, but I'm feeling flustered. Now that I'm right next to him, though, I can see his limp again. I almost forgot about it. He's putting significant weight onto his left leg, but he doesn't look unsteady. In fact, he looks like he could take a tackle if he needed to. So, kid, we want to talk since we want to talk since we're in the same group. We're in the same group? Yeah, you're Wallace Stewart, which is in the same group as me, Group F. Before I can respond, he's already fishing something out of his jacket pocket. It's a notepad. He flicks through it for a few seconds before showing me a page. Written across the fifth line is Group F: Lucas Brindley, Oscar Castle, Lily Rose, Ashley Scott, and Wallace Stewart. Hmm. Did you write that down as he was giving it? Yeah, thought I would. Should make shit easier. Including your own name? Yeah, I'm not good at note taking, so I'm just writing everything he says as he says it, as if, if it seems like it's important. You're a lot more prepared than I expected. His stare hardens. For a second, I think he's mad, but it's more like he's just focused. I'm not smart, so I gotta try really fucking hard. I'll admit, you don't give off the trying hard at academics aura. No offense, I am just meaning since... It's fine. I know. Don't stress yourself, kid. He gives me a smile, just like his previous one. It's a very toothy smile. He really is rather charming. I thought this guy was a delinquent. What's wrong with me? I never thought I'd be the judgmental type. Why are you trying so hard, then? Would you rather I didn't? He's got a confused look on his face again, his nose scrunching up and his ears standing more at attention. God, I'm bad at this. No, I didn't mean... I meant, why are you going to university then? Not that you can't, but... Again, kid, calm down. I'm not gonna bite your head off. Right. Sorry, I'm just not used to this. Used to what? Talking? Yeah, I've always been kind of a loner, so I don't really talk to people often. Well, don't stress so much around me. I'm not some kind of thug who is going to beat you up as much as I look like one. Wait, no, I didn't mean to imply you look like a thug. He gives me that smile again this time lifting one of his arms to give me a pat on the back. Hey, it's okay. I know how I look. I'm not ashamed of it. I don't think you look bad, just intimidating. Then it's working. Why? You... Do you want... Why do you want... <laughs> so you're wondering why I'm at college. Oh, uh, yeah. That subject change is too obvious to not notice, but I don't want to pry too much. He's been really nice so far, so no need to push my luck. I just need to get a higher paying job. I need to help support my family. Well, my sister. Oh, what's she like? He suddenly stops and I feel a chill run up my spine. Did I mess up? How about this? I'll tell you after we meet up again on Wednesday. Sh sure. Cool. I would carry on, but where at my stop? No. Oh. I blinked for a second before looking around. I hadn't really been paying a lot of attention to my surroundings. I didn't realize we left the alleyway at all. We're in the middle of a supermarket parking lot. I'm about to say something when he holds out a piece of paper, causing my voice to get sta snagged in my throat. It takes me a second to respond, but I gently grab the paper from his clawed fingers. All that's written down is a series of numbers. It's my phone number. We're going to be working together. It'd be best to share. Oh, yeah, let me just send you a message. Do that on the way home. I gotta hurry. My sister will be getting hungry soon, and she'll hold, me she'll hold that over me all night. Right. Sorry, I'll let you get on your way. Thank you. Wondering who his sister is. He's very secretive about her. Very odd. No need to be so formal, kid. Just relax. He offers a handshake, and I get a proper look at both of his hands. Their textures look coarse and rough. I think I've seen. I think I see a few scars too. There's a moment of hesitation before I take his hand. Caution, painting my movements. I don't think he'll hurt me intentionally, but I got a feeling this guy is a bit stronger than he looks, and I don't want my hand crushed. To my surprise, he's very delicate. I'll catch you later, kid. Yeah, I'll see you on Wednesday. Thanks a lot for today. Bah, it's no stress. I'm not just going to let you fall on your face. He lets out a bellowing laugh. I can feel the vibrations of his deep bass despite the gap between us. It's reassuring, and without thinking, I'm laughing alongside him. He's like a rock holding me up, strong and sturdy. Now get. It's gonna get dark soon, and make sure you eat. I know you types tend to forget a lot. The sudden coddling has my face flushing. Normally I protest, but I feel like he's not the kind of guy who'd take that. All I do is give him a small nod. That's what I like to see. With that final statement, he turns and disappears through the sliding doors. He doesn't even give me a chance to respond. I stand there for a few seconds, processing what just happened. 
I think I just made a friend, though, honestly, it feels more like I gained another parent. Daddy Possum. Daddy Possum! He's a pretty cool guy. A lot more charming and gentle than one would expect. I can't wait to talk to more talk to him more on Wednesday. Back at the apartment, it's surprisingly silent, almost eerie. I'm not sure if it's because people are out partying, out studying for the new classes, or just resting up after the first day. As I unlock my room, it opens into up into cold darkness. Having no roommate is great is great for privacy, but it's a little lonely having no one else to come home to. I try to ignore the yearning for home and flick on the lights. It's not too cold yet. The autumn weather only gives the room a cool wisp that makes my fur tingle. I place my laptop bag on the desk and look around at the sparse furniture located across the room. The bedside tables can barely be called drawers. I'm not sure how they expect us to fit all our clothes into a single one. I'd be able to fit a couple shirts and pants along with my underwear at best. Maybe they thought we'd split the closet between the both of us. But even with that, we wouldn't have much space. I probably open my luggage bag and get to work putting away what I can, hanging up the few formal clothes I have in the closet and shoving the rest into the two nightstands. After putting away my shirts in the top drawer of my would-be roommate's nightstand, I try to do the same with my plant with my pants, but the bottom drawer won't come out. For a second, I wonder if it's locked before realizing that that's stupid because why would only one nightstand have a lock? After a few more gentle pulls, I begin to lose my patience and put all my weight into dislodging the drawer. For God's sake, just come out! I'm moments away from giving up when I feel it's starting to budge, but before I can celebrate, I'm being flung away onto my back. A loud crashing sound thunders throughout the room, and a surge of pain runs up my leg. Groaning, I sit up and access the da and assess the damage. And access the damage, it should be assess. Assess the damage, checking over my leg for injuries to match the spiking ache running up my shin. But there doesn't look to be any real damage. Instead, I find the entire drawer dislodged from the nightstand next to me. It must have smacked my leg on the way out. Ignoring the dulling pain, I pick up the drawer and slide back over to the nightstand, but I stop when I notice a glimpse of purple. Leaning closer, I can see a thin book hidden below the bottom drawer. Someone must have really wanted to hide whatever this is. I remove the book from its hiding place. The word diary is the first thing that catches my eye. A small twinge of curiosity rises within me, but I push it down. I don't want to invade someone's privacy, but what should I do? Should I just put it back? Well, that seems a bit pointless. Whoever lived here before probably forgot about it. It wouldn't be here otherwise. Toss it away? But they might have accidentally left it behind and want it back. Best case scenario would be returning it to them, but where would I even start? I don't even know who this belongs to, let alone how old this book is. With a deep sigh, I fall onto my bed. I need some leads to go on. Running my fingers along the edges of the book, I notice something strange about its condition. Other than a small bit of wear near the spine, there's very, li there's very little markings or damage on the book at all. This book was either barely used, pretty new, or well taken care of. Turning the book over yields even more answers. In the bottom right corner underneath the barcode is the manufacturing date. January 2019. That's early last year! That means this probably belonged to the last resident. They might still have a file on them. Springing up from my lying down position, I head out the door with an excited bounce to my step. Hmm. That won't last long. I walk out the elevator on the ground floor. I walk out the elevator on the ground floor to the feeling of my earlier vigor dissipating. The light clacking of my claws against the floor makes me nervous, the echo reminding me just how empty the lobby is after dark. I slowly shuffle my way closer to the front desk, catching sight of the receptionist. She's a different one from when I checked on from when I checked in this morning. She's tall and thin, but her features are hard to make out. I think she's a sheep of some kind. When I get closer, though, I can see she's actually a poodle. Her fur is puffed out and meticulously groomed to the point it looks like wool. She's packing up for the day. My mouth dries as I check the time on my phone. It's 6.05 p.m. That's five minutes after reception is supposed to have closed. A sickly feeling wells in my stomach, and that's nearly enough to deter me away. But I didn't just come here to back out before even starting. Something tells me if I don't do this now, I'll never do it. Taking a moment to calm down, I force myself to walk up to the counter. The canine doesn't notice me at first, or if she does, she's choosing to ignore me. Tapping my claws nervously on the desk, I feel extremely unwanted. The, dis the disdain she's exuding is suffocating. I think I'm getting a headache. Eventually, she turns to me with a sigh so filled with annoyance that I want to run back up to my room and pretend I never found this book. I guess that answers my question about if she'd been ignoring me or not. You know, the front desk isn't open, isn't open after six, right? Now that I can see her face more clearly, she's wearing a tired expression. The bags under her eyes make me feel even more guilty. He, yeah, I just needed you to check something for me real fast. I, I promise it won't take very long. At least I hope it doesn't take very long. 
After a few seconds of contemplation, she finally sits back in front of her computer. Fine. Don't do this again, though. Some of us just want to go home. After some key taps and clicking around with the mouse, she looks back at me. So, what is it? Realizing I've just been standing there like an idiot, I quickly put the diary on the desk. Someone left something in my room. I was hoping I could get their name, so maybe I could give it back. I'm in room 603 on side A. I think the person was on side B? I was in the night it was in the nightstand on that side. The only response she gives me is a non-committal huff as she returns to typing. After about 20 seconds, her eyes widen slightly before quickly going back to normal. It happened so fast, I'm not sure it actually happened. I am tempted to lean over to see what's on the screen, but I exercise a bit of restraint. She's no longer tapping on the keyboard, nor looking at the screen. She seems to be contemplating something. A few seconds of silence fly by before she turns to me with an unsure look on her face. Sorry, but we're not really allowed to disclose the information of previous residents. I hope you understand. The only immediate response I can give is a slow nod. Well, this makes sense. I can't help but feel like I'm being lied to. After all, why would she go through the effort of looking for the information if she was just going to deny, to deny me at the end? Well, um, could you send this to them? It's theirs, and they might want it back. I slide the book across the desk to the poodle, but she instantly pushes it back towards me. Sorry, we don't keep records of their future address. Maybe you can keep it. She must have realized how silly that sounds, because she dismisses that with a wave of her hand. Her demeanor is more nervous than annoyed now. Just, what did she see? Or just throw it away. It's an old diary, after all. She probably has a new one. She? Once again, I feel like I'm being stonewalled in a really bizarre way. What she's saying makes sense, and it's probably true, but she's saying it in a way where I feel like they're hiding something from me. It's actually very eerie. I suddenly feel very uncomfortable, like I'm being watched through the security cameras. I mean, you probably are. Sorry to bother you, then. Thank you for your help. My mutter is barely audible as I hurry to grab the journal and rush to the elevator. Have a good night, sir. I don't look back. An itching sensation runs up my back as I push my way into my room. A heavy, uncomfortable feeling crawls up my neck, causing the fur to stand on end. I chuck the diary onto the desk and fall haphazardly onto my bed. It's best to just ignore it for now. The only problem is underneath me is a pile of pants, an uncomfortable lump pressing into my stomach. The pile of pants. <laughs> After I found the diary, I completely forgot to put them away. Turning my head to the right, I can see the dislodged drawer leaning against the far nightstand. I'll deal with that later, too. Right now, I just need a moment to mellow out. Just a moment. And he falls asleep. <laughs> Ooh, yes, far off place. Oh, Oscar, you are so full of mysteries. Wallace, you are so full of mysteries. Lucas, so full of mysteries. Lay, so full of mysteries. And maybe Lily has a bit of a mystery herself. Oh, this group is keeping secrets. And I shall uncover them. Alright, anyway. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I'm standing on a beach. The water looks black under the night sky. The waves crash in front of me as, as I sit on a rocky edge. I can feel my eyes burn as if I had stared into the sun for hours. The only companion with me on this deserted beach is the sound of the thunderous roaring in front of me. There's a part of me that wants to join in its uproar, to just scream so loud the heavens will quiver. But I can't bring myself to do anything. All I can do is stare down at this phone in my hand, watching my reflection on the empty screen, as if waiting for something. But I can't remember what I'm waiting for. It feels like I've been sitting there for hours. Suddenly my phone lights up and I see a little message pop up. As the alert chimes from my phone, I feel myself lurching upwards. Bing! The relatively quiet alert echoes loudly, ripping apart the peaceful silence as I'm jolted awake. My eyes burn as I try to figure out what's going on. Between my head pounding and bile in my throat, it takes me nearly a minute to compose myself. A loud groan croaks from my throat as I fumble about, trying to locate my phone. What time is it? My voice sounds hoarse, like I haven't drank anything in years. It's like my entire mouth is filled with cotton. Locating my phone, it shows I've only been asleep for an hour and a half. No wonder I'm feeling awful. Naps always make me feel like trash. The only notifications I've gotten are two emails. The first is just the promised contact information of the rest of my media group, while the other is from a name I barely recognize. Cinder, Lily Rose. Subject, Meetup. I consider just going back to sleep and reading it later, but the silhouette of the drawer on the other, on the other bed reminds me I still have to put my pants away. Sitting up, I hear little clicks and I as I stretch my back. A bad sleeping posture makes this a common occurrence, but the sound never fails to make my skin crawl. 
Blinking away the last of the sleep from my eyes, I open up the email. The brightness makes reading it with bleary, bleary eyes more difficult. Hey! My name, is, my name is Lily. I'm in the same media class as you guys. I just wanted to let you guys know that I want to do a little get-together tomorrow. So, we can do some introductions and maybe get started on our project a bit. Wouldn't that be pretty cool? I was thinking we could meet up at the school library near Edmund Hall at around lunch. We can hang out, we can hang then, maybe get some food, you know. I'm sending this to all of you, so if it conflicts with any of your schedules, let me know and I'll just change the time. Tell me tonight! We don't want, it to, we don't want to do it on such short notice. Love, Lily. It takes me a moment to remember the name. Right. Lily Rose. She's in my group. Meeting her and the others is probably a good idea. And that is going to have to wait till the next episode. So, thank you guys for watching. This has been a, a new episode of Violet Memoir. Oh, you may Lay's Path. Yes, we have begun Lay's Path. Oscar's Path was pretty short. Um, until the, at least the next update. Very much looking forward to uh, more updates for this game. It's so awesome. I can't wait to see what kind of mystery is going to unravel. But, Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell until the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!